shove the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix has come and gone. But let's look back at the start. Valtteri is on pole, Lewis is second, with overtaking being really difficult at the Yas Marina circuit. Was this Lewis's best chance at taking the win? Absolutely. The, the start was Lewis's best chance. Uh, it's very hard to overtake there. And if he had got into the lead, it's almost certain that he could have, uh, could have stayed there and won the race. So the two of them are very, very focused on that start procedure, making sure they don't under-engage under the clutch where they don't put enough torque down or over-engage and you get wheel spin and you're stood there while everyone's going by. So it really was actually a key moment and a, and a, and a big opportunity for both of them. Definitely. And then looking at the first pit stops, Verstappen came in on lap 14 and Raikkonen just one lap later on lap 15. But you only brought Valtteri in on lap 21. So what was the decision making process behind that? Uh, what would have been going through Red Bull's minds there is actually Verstappen here was in P5. And what he's looking to do is drop into this Force India traffic. Now, that's his way of trying to get an undercut. He's got to drop into traffic. He's got to pass it. But if he waits until Kimi's got the gap, Kimi's going to take it and there's no undercut opportunity at all. Equally, the overcut here is tricky because the tyres, although they're consistent, you haven't got big lap time differences between the cars. So Verstappen made that move. He dropped behind one of the Force Indias, took him a few laps to get by, but Kimi was very easily able to cover it. Now, it's one of those races where sometimes that will trigger a sequence of stops, but those two cars weren't really reacting with us, they weren't really reacting with Vettel in the Ferrari. So actually, we let them do that and no one else reacted to it. And it was a little while later when Ricardo stopped that it actually started to trigger the sequence. I mean, at this stage of the race, our key focus was really Vettel. We had a reasonable gap to him. We were able to just pull out enough that there wasn't a big undercut risk there. Um, but what we're really worried about is if we stop before him a subsequent safety car or a VSC, he gets that much faster stop and they could jump into the lead and from there it would be very, very difficult for us to win the race. So Vettel comes in on lap 20. Uh, we can react to that with Valtteri. So we brought Valtteri in. He was the lead car and it gives him the best opportunity at retaining position. And then our focus shifts to Lewis. We'll try and do what's right for Lewis. And if we brought him in straight away, he would have definitely dropped behind. So we wanted to see, is there, is there a chance of him overcutting? The reality was that Valtteri's fresh tyres, given that they're in the, in the same car, uh, Valtteri on fresh tyres was easily able to cover that uh, risk from Lewis, matching his lap times. So we left Lewis out until about 24 and then, then decided to bring him in because the move was never going to work. And then by lap 49, Lewis and Valtteri were trading fastest lap times. They're pushing each other really hard, but how hard were they pushing each other exactly? And was it hard for Valtteri to keep in control of the race? Um, I, I mean, Valtteri was doing quite a bit of management in, in this stint because although the tyres were pretty strong, he knows that if you actually lose the rears, you can't get out of those slow speed exits onto the long straights. And then it's very, very difficult to defend. So he was actually driving quite carefully um, not over sliding the tyres looking after them. Um, Lewis in the first stint was doing a bit of management because he was thinking about this, uh, this overcut opportunity, so saving the tyres so he could push end of stint. When that didn't work, he knew really in the second stint actually he just had to put Valtteri under pressure, force him to make a mistake. So Lewis was driving really hard, uh, obviously he couldn't, couldn't get that close to Valtteri because of the turbulent air, but he was just pushing him, seeing if he could cause him to lock a wheel or something. But actually Valtteri's pretty good at handling that pressure. I think none of his race wins have been easy. He's always had someone in his mirrors in the, uh, in the closing stages. And I think he's quite used to it. So he did a good job, but we just let Lewis, um, Lewis make his life a bit difficult because the two of them were free to race. It was actually a race that didn't see that much strategy variation. Were there any other options other than the one stop available to the teams? No, it was, I mean, even before we got there, we knew that it was going to be a one stop and we knew that it would be a, an ultra soft, super soft one stop. So it's quite unusual to have that much clarity and to have um, so much conformity in the field where they're all doing the same, the same thing. The, the question here was just when would the stops occur? And the more consistent the tyres are, the more you can open that window. And, and actually, you could have come in very early and gone to the finish. You could have had stops from as early as lap 10, or it could have all pushed out to about lap 35, 40 even, if people are waiting for everyone to, to react. So it was a, from that point of view, there wasn't a lot, of, a lot of action in the race. And really, it was just down to two things. One, the very consistent tyres, 
which I think will change for next year. I think we'll go more aggressive on the selection, but also the difficulty in overtaking. Definitely. So let's hope for some great races in 2018. Absolutely. Thank Looking you very much. To it. Thank you.